Hello, and welcome to Cyberdeck Users Weekly, a bi-weekly show about technology and how to own it. My name is Paul, and I'm very proud to announce that I am joined today by Internet of Shit. That's me. Uh, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the pod, Internet of Shit. Finally here. Love it. Uh, so we just lost a recording because uh, we're using web browsers to record this. Like, and Windows. Like, like, like noobs. There you go. Um, blame, blame. You know what? I blame Bill Gates. Personally. <laughs> personally, everybody seems to be blaming him right now. <laughs> uh, okay. So we're, you know, everybody, you know the story. It's not going to be as fresh. It's not going to yeah. be as hilarious and spontaneous as it was the first time around. But we're going to give it our best shot. Uh, and then I'm going to go eat dinner. Because uh, my sister is cooking up something that smells delicious. Love it. Uh, so, uh, what is uh, well, what what is it? What is this Twitter account that you that you run? Okay, so it's this account I made many moons ago. It feels like a million years ago to make fun of, like I guess the ridiculousness of the Internet of Things. Like I was sitting at a job, uh, like getting all these emails along the lines of like. You know, buy this connected fridge. It can like send you text updates of what's in the door, and <laughs> like uh, that kind of thing. And I was getting like so many of these emails from all these companies. I think it was like maybe when Product Hunt had come out. I don't know exactly where that. Oh yeah, those are good times. It was, yeah, it was good. It was fun. There was always something new for some reason. Um, and I think it was just like this weird period of time where people were just shoving into it and things like. And it was, it felt relentless. Like every day it would be some escalating story. I remember the first one was something along the, along the lines of smart fridge. And then there was like smart Barbie doll. Why, why are we doing this? Mm. And like, it just kept, it kept escalating. Like every week there was a new smart thing. And like every time you think that they'd scrape the bottom of the barrel, they had somehow put incident in it. Like there's always what, what, a way. What, was it clear at the start that it was going to be shitty um, a shitty experience or just that you're putting internet and everything? Yeah, I think it was, it was a bit of both. Like when I started the account, it was honestly, like honestly just a way to prop fun at the fact that it seemed ridiculous in plain sight and nobody was willing to like point that out. Like, you know, there were people complaining about it, but there was nobody like actively making fun of the fact that we're literally putting Linux on a light bulb mm. <laughs> like, and, sell, and people are buying it. Um, especially like if I think of the weirder products like the Connected Barbie, I gave an example of, it was like obvious where they were, could go wrong, I think, even mm. from the outset. It's like, even if it was it had a legitimate purpose, it's like adding the internet is not probably not a good idea in the case of Barbie. And so, uh, why'd you do it uh, as a as a nem? Why can't you just shit on these things? Um, <laughs> by the way, we we have met IRL. Uh, yes, I I, I know the true identity yes. of Internet of Shit. You do. What I'm not going to share. Um, yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we can't do the big unveil. But no, it's like honestly, it's all in fun because like it's a non a non <laughs> because because like. I don't know about you, but I can talk more freely on a like old account. Like when you're on your own account and you're making fun of things, it feels mean. I don't know if I'm just <laughs> a nice person. Like there are troll accounts that somehow don't care. But like I know that there's people on the other side of that. I've worked in an Internet of Things company. I think, yeah, I'm going to go here. But I think um, it was something about just wanting to separate them. Like I'm not a person insulting you. It's just like that. I can acknowledge that like you're probably a fine, okay, human that was working on this while still making fun of it, right? Because you're coming from a place of the pl platonic ideal of internet of, of shit, not like just so yeah. you like hate hate Jeff who, yeah. who like wrote some JavaScript. Yeah, exactly. Like trip. whatever, he was making a living, right? Like the internet connected light bulb needed to exist. Like it was inevitable that it would happen. Somebody wanted to do it. And you can yeah. make money. You clearly can make money doing well, this. And I always had this struggle as, as a journalist, um, writing up, uh, about technology um when you're writing about technology you actually interview sometimes people who actually made it you don't mm -hmm. just only talk to pr people but a lot right. of times you talk to pr people but when you talk to people who made it 
you just get on their side. You get yeah. so much sympathy for them. And, and when they ship you their product and, you know, they, they work 80 hour weeks uh, for six months and put their whole lives into this product and it's, it's shit. Yeah. It's, it's hard to say it. The humans. And like, maybe I'm just like the, the nicest <laughs> fake account, but I, I did think that was genuinely it. And like, I don't know. There's also like, I still make fun of things on my own account, but like not as pointedly. Right. Like I just, I think alt accounts and like a non accounts are fun in that way that like, it's nobody in particular saying it. It's more like this random collective thought <laughs> when it, when it resonates at least. Well, and it, it really is a strong theme. Like yes. uh, it, I can scroll through your Twitter and it, you know, just things never change. Something yeah. um, um, breaks because it doesn't mm-hmm. have connection for some reason. The servers <laughs> go down. Um, uh, uh, sir, uh, someone tries to pivot to subscription payments. Yeah. Someone goes out of business. Mm-hmm. Um, firmware updates. Uh, <laughs> can't, can't eat. Yeah, can't feed my family because yeah. there's a firmware update. Yeah, and that's, and that's exactly it. It's like it got to the point where the tropes were ridiculous. Like one of the tweets I made really early on was this like photo of a guy presenting at this Google Cloud conference. And he's showing his like crazy Internet of Things server diagram. It's like 26 servers to turn on a light bulb. And like, I was like, oh my God. So turning on a light bulb, I'm having 26 data centers just to like not get off the couch and just like, from that, that, like I can acknowledge in one breath that it's cool that this exists. That mm. I can turn on my lights and change colors and stuff from my phone while still mm. making fun of the fact that it's stupid. Yeah. Well, so as the foremost uh, expert on the on the Internet of Shit, um, <laughs> could you could you give us a little bit of a history lesson on the Internet of Things, or at least yeah. from your perspective, how did this happen? So I'm still I'm still developing this take, but. I think it was a convergence of a few things that went on over the space of like a couple of years. So there was like everybody had a phone in their pocket and like decent 3G service all of a sudden um, combined with like, I guess, like there was this period of time where computers were like not cheap, but not expensive. And then the Raspberry Pi came out and it was just like, I feel like it's maybe related. It's a pivotal moment where like you could run Linux on this like thing that's the size of a credit card kind of thing. Um, you could hook that up to a servo and make something happen. And like, I think that's when people realized that they could make things without being some manufacturing guru or like whatever, like before to get into embedded systems, you had to like go and study it and then like go to like Hong Kong and like, like how to make a chip and like whatever. And then at some point there's like raspberry Pi drops out of the sky and it's associated with like the Arduinos and all of those things. <laughs> where like you had Bluetooth and Wi-Fi in this tiny low power device running Linux and like you could you could write an Internet of Things thing using JavaScript, mm-hmm. which apparently was a good idea. But I think it was like something about that and then like all of this VC money. Like that was the other thing it was like having the VC money around meant that like all of these things turned into something, like a category. Mm. Yeah, well the there's the the buzzword, you know, mm-hmm. I think we were just coming off of the cloud era, which mm. was, you know, really one of the top 10 buzzwords oh of, te- really of, of the tech knew. industry. <laughs> um, and then Internet of Things is like, I remember having it pitched in the sense of like, well, <laughs> you only need one phone and mm-hmm. one laptop, right? So there's that many Internet connected devices. Right. I think of all the other objects in your life. So like, it's like a 10 X moment, right? Because mm-hmm. there's like at least 10 times more objects than yeah. your phone and laptop in your house. Yeah. All of them could have the internet. It's great buzzword. Yeah. It tracks money. And I feel like there's something, once you find a name for it, right. you create Everybody rallies forward. around it. They're like, I've got to have an internet. Like Google's like, we're going to be on the internet of things. Like, mm-hmm. and Amazon, like we, it became a race, right? Like it, the industry has this thing where it like self invents categories almost, right? Like by Apple and Google being interested, there's a whole race of VC money that like endorses all of this or whatever. And I think, or even like vice versa, like there's a bunch of scrappy companies that do it and then Google gets into it and then everyone realizes there's no money. Um, but I think you're right that 
having a name and like all of these things coming together made it almost inevitable. And I also think that it was easier than other conventions in the past because this is like maybe maybe a reach but i'm just gonna say it uh and that like you didn't have to manif- like do th- something from scratch you could just like look at a printer and be like what if i put internet in it and then you're like what if i put internet in this coffee maker like what if I, mm. like it was it was kind of obvious what to do well relatively obvious because coffee makers exist right yeah. and all they really need is to be turned on right so right. all you're doing is connecting a circuit yeah um which i like i can i can turn on and off a light with a raspberry pi like i'm yeah. that advanced right. um and then the chip is a system on a chip right mm-hmm. so it's got wi-fi and or bluetooth and or yeah. nfc or whatever exactly and that's a package that you just buy off the shelf so all mm-hmm. you are is a software developer and then uh, have enough hardware expertise to you know mm-hmm. wire the leads to the thing that turns yeah. the coffee coffee machine on I think that's. I think that, that was a large part of it in the earliest, especially in the early, early time of this. You saw a lot of like, basically just that. Like a lot, <laughs> the most popular category of smart things. I'm pretty sure is still just like power outlets. <laughs> like, and it tells you a lot about like the. There's a few like genuinely interesting products that are like from scratch. I think, and then the rest of them are like we put the internet in it because reasons. Yeah, what what are what are some of the the highlights? What's what what um, what what's the Internet of Things doing correctly? I feel um, torn about like <laughs> endorsing something. Like I know I'm gonna get, I get like hate sometimes on the account. Like, How can you possibly endorse something? But here's a little secret, right? Like I have to use it to make fun of it. Like <laughs> <laughs> like people will send me stuff, do, but it's do never you have be. to use it or do you love to use it? I. I hate myself. <laughs> oh, I'm a masochist, right? Like, I, I, I think I, I do think it's genuinely interesting, right? Like, the fact that we yeah. had had a moment in itself to make an account happen like this. We all collectively think there's something going on here. We must be interested. Um, but anyway, so I buy a lot of this. I have a whole folder on my phone called Internet of Shits um, full of full, uh, apps. I think, like, if I were to, I'll try and name, like, two. I think the I mean, Phillips, you, we should give them some credit. Like, this stuff works. They, mm. I don't think they've been hacked yet. Um, I say that, but somebody will probably tell me they have been. It's, it seems to be always the way. Mm. Um, but they, they support their products, and like, their app is fine. They don't demand more money. Um, and that's a pretty high bar at this point. Um, and then the, I guess like another one would be Sonos. They've had speakers that have been out for like 15 years, you know, and there was some controversy this year where they like, we're going to brick some speakers and stuff that they hadn't, they've had in their lineup for 15 years because they're getting too slow. And like, I can understand that. Mm. And then they ended up like backtracking it after people were mad. So like, I can, I can throw my weight behind that. Um, the other one that I would like throw in the mix, just to undercut my Philips Hue comment was like smart light switches. Um, so there's one by a very old company called Lutron, which is pretty good. It just does the thing it's supposed to do. Um, and there's another one called Brilliant, which is like an iPod touch glued to the wall. You like replace your switches, but like, it's kind of like your hub thing. And like, I, I actually really like that. It just works. And like, there's a physical manifestation of all this connected stuff. Did, you can does, tap. does the iPod touch glued to the wall even need internet? Uh, I mean, you could get away without doing it if you wanted to wire everything into it. But the beauty of this one, at least... Yeah, I guess they could have done it offline. That's the thing. So it does need internet. <laughs> like standards exist for this. Now that you say it, it's like it should have just used Z-Wave or something, right? Like it could have. Oh, my cat has decided to say hello. Um, hello. <laughs> so, um, but I guess this is what I'm saying is like they could have used open standards, but this one is good at least because it uses the internet and it works with all the other stuff that uses the internet. Um and it's nice that like I don't I had this this horrible realization. I had somebody stay in my house last year uh, while I was away that I had to write documentation to use my smart home. Like I like don't turn off the switches, like is here's how to use the thermos that download these three apps and I was like, okay, good God, like I've gone, I've gone too far. <laughs> and so that helps with that. Well, and you also you also got a cat feeder, right? Yes. You explain the the tale oh, of the oh, cat feeder. Lord. So 
uh, like I said, I'm going to qualify everything with like, I buy this because somebody has to do it. Um, but I was looking for a cat feeder uh, for a while. And um, there's plenty of like dumb ones, right? I could have just got one of those. It's a clock that dispenses food. Like how hard is it? This is, mm. this is the thing with all the tentative things. This is usually something that sort of predates it. Mm. Um, but I didn't want them for some reason. And there was this one that like, dispense food it had an app it would like you could type in the cat's weight and it would uh, recommend stuff um and i bought it and it was fine for a while it like worked pretty well um and then there was this point where like it stopped working randomly sometimes it would complain there's no internet or like something and then it would come back and then over over the space of the last year it just got progressively worse sometimes it would go down for like two days and it would be like you get an email a mysterious email being like oh sorry about the outage don't reboot your feeder or your cat can't with me <laughs> uh, and it's like, oh, well, like how could you not even save that offline <laughs> i don't i don't understand it um and so yeah they could at least like store like, like a, a schedule on the flash memory yeah, like a, thing, a right? file like we, we have the technology <laughs> it's like it's, yeah. raspberry pi comes with that like you could just save some storage stuff um mm. But anyway, it got, it got worse and worse to the point that um, people were starting to speculate if the company had gone out of business. And um, because there was this one outage that was, I think, two weeks long. Um, and it just uh, the funniest thing about this is like, if that had happened at the wrong time, like somebody's cat could have died if they yeah. were on vacation. And I was on vacation when it happened. <laughs> um, I'm, I wasn't like as irresponsible. I guess, like, I had a friend who would, like, come and check on the cat. Like, I wouldn't just leave my cat there for days on end. Um, and so he was able to feed it. But it was just this crazy realization that, like, holy shit, like, this, these companies are, like, genuinely just don't care. And the long, this went on forever. But eventually, the company behind this pet feeder actually went out of business. Uh, during COVID, uh, it seems to be the thing to do right now is, like, blame COVID for the fact that you had no business model. So um, they sent this email out that was like, oh, well, you know, we've tried every possible avenue. We had to let our staff go. And also we couldn't pay the server bill. So you no you may have noticed that your cat feeder isn't working, that you paid money to buy. And um, uh, at the end of the email, they're like, oh, would you like to fill in our survey? We'd like to gauge interest in our $5 a month plan to revive it. And I'm like, oh my God, like, what is this? Is, so, is there like a is is there some sort of um, revolution of like interested technical users who want to like hack their? I mean, that's it sounds so stupid now that you <laughs> have to do that, but yeah. somehow control this themselves. They're like, a happy like, medium. Yeah, um, I think like the the problem is there are stuff. There are there are things. There's like Home Assistant is the big one. Everybody's seen it. It's like this thing you can put on a Raspberry Pi. It's like a home hub type thing. But it's configured with YAML. Like I don't know about you, man, but I don't want to edit a YAML file in my spare time. What's the, it's what's the, the worst. What's the term? That's like significant white space. That, that's right. not the right. But like the, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, white space matters in the yeah. YAML, and it's uh, that's it's, very difficult. Oh, uh, it's awful. It genuinely is the worst. And like I. Props to them. They made an open source home management like app, yeah. whatever. And I get a lot of like angry comments at the account all the time, being like, "Why don't you just use Home Assistant?" I'm like, "Dudes, I just don't have time to <laughs> configure that." Like, I, like I want smart light bulbs. I will admit sometimes, but I'm not gonna <laughs> set up this web server, whatever. Um, I think there's opportunity for this. Like HomeKit is probably like the the closest, like Apple's whole thing. But the mm -hmm. fact that they assume that like the home hub will be your iPad, which may or may not be in your house, is just but, the weirdest. Like it's the most Apple way to solve it. Um, and there haven't been any like off the shelf ones that I really have been impressed. Like there's just there's some around, but I don't wouldn't put my own money on them. Well, yeah, it's just it's tough for me because it's like there's nothing seemingly there's nothing technical that stops it from from being like a hub, and the hub can like. Internet is optional. Right. You go on vacation, you open up some ports, and yeah. you can phone home and feed your cat. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of the time, you're on like home mode, and yeah. and 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 now it's relatively secure. Things are yeah. talking to because I feel like I could maybe maybe get into that. Like yeah. that sounds fun. Exactly. But I don't want to <laughs> hang ten different Linux distributions <laughs> exactly. on the internet. Yeah, yeah. and that's. 
that's the thing with all of this is like I'm genuinely it worries me that like there's probably like this is joke that was going around for a long time it's like about updating the linux on light bulbs like this is where we've ended up like mm. and it scares me the thing that scares me the most is maybe that like most of them are a black box and i think even deeper than that is that they haven't thought about any meaningful business model so like it turns into e-waste basically they're at the end of this if they're not charging money like at some point petnet the company that makes the pet feeder that i have didn't have money to run their servers and when they started the company they clearly hadn't thought about the fact that servers never cost less to run right <laughs> like and, you know and i think companies like nest as an example like they're bankrolled by google but they're expensive enough that they're probably building in some of the price same with phillips hewitt's like the margin on a light bulb must be ridiculous and so i think like when you think about that it's kind of a weird time i can see it getting better i do think that that could be a possibility and also like i don't know if i would care about the fact that this unsecured linux is running in my house if these companies would just build it right that's the part that's weird to me is like everybody's building it in some weird way where some for some, like they're having these meetings where they're building these things like this this patent company must have had a meeting where they were like Okay, what happens if the incident goes down forever? Like, <laughs> like, 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 surely they talk about this. Yeah, I don't know. It's tough. I mean, maybe it's just yeah, like this gold rush mentality, like the right. the the um um the 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 I'm struggling to find a, a kind word. The inexperienced yeah. uh, entrepreneurs got it. Yeah, and I think it. I think it's also the like. The, barrier lowering so much which is a really good thing in general it means that people are yeah they have no experience like they're building these things yeah. with just like before like 10 years ago if you wanted to build i don't know a smart pet feeder you probably had to be an embedded systems engineer you couldn't just go to like hong kong and like meet some electronics people get the bits and like do the thing you genuinely had to design the chipsets yourself and now you don't have to like you don't it's just it's like Linux and you can already run Node.js and do it. Like it's, it's and I think that's it. It's like there's no consideration for the realities of the real world. It's something I think about a lot. Um, because I go back and forth whether Unity, the mm -hmm. game engine, is mm -hmm. any good. Mm -hmm. Because there have been so many terrible games made with Unity. Yeah, exactly. But also, Unity is the easiest way probably to make mm -hmm. your first game. Yeah. So and that's, that's exactly the same thing here, I think. <laughs> but um, yeah, they, they made their first product, and it happened to be your cat feeder. But that's the biggest, yeah, the biggest problem with it is that it's a complete mess, and you just like because they have no <laughs> business model, you don't know when you're buying it. Like you're paying one hundred and eighty dollars or something for this overkill pet feeder, right? But you mm -hmm. you don't know when you're buying it. Like what? The, are they selling your data or not? Like if they're not charging you money up front basically selling your data, they just have no plan. Like, so right. something bad is going to happen. And I think that's where we need to convince people to check. Like, that's kind of the point of the account is like, buy this stuff. I, like, I'm not, there's no way we can stop people. If you, if you put a smart oven next to five dumb, dumb ovens, the average person is probably going to buy the smart one. Like, it's just, because it looks bit like it, it's got all these features. You can turn the turkey off while driving your truck for some mm -hmm. reason, like whatever. But if they build it right, who cares? Like, I just, you know, like, let people do things is fine. <laughs> okay. But, like, just, just build it. So like, just keep an eye out. Like, yeah. I guess that's that's the thing. Like, how do we know when it's good? Like, because yeah. you don't necessarily know until, you know, a couple of years later, or you've had it for six months and the server's well, yeah. done half the time. And, like, Nest is a rare example, and I hate endorsing them because it's not that good, but, like, it, it works and they haven't turned it off and it just does the job. Like, it's, it's, you can do it. <laughs> it's just not easy. Where, where, where are? Uh, I think one of the quintessential Internet of Things devices, and this is also sort of a, a narrative mm. that we were kind of um, discovering at the Verge um, for a while. Like at CES, is that like Alexa mm. became the hub oh, yeah. of the Internet of Things, uh, and so I don't know who was really winning there. Um, but, <laughs> I actually don't either. Like, I just stopped watching. <laughs> but that's definitely like that was like you would announce a product that was an yeah. Internet of Things device and it had Alexa integration. It had to. It had to. Um, I think, 
yeah, you're right to bring it up because it is a big part of it. And I think like maybe those became the core of the smart home. Like I own the Google Home and I do think that without it, the Internet of Things is a bit more janky because you're forced to use your phone or like whatever to do it, which isn't a good sign in the first place. But it does help bring it all together a bit more. And I don't know. I have problems. Like I, <laughs> I think like I don't use Alexa because I'm scared of Jeff Bezos, but the fact that I use Google in some way, like I'd, maybe it's because Google doesn't have a face. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is that makes me not want to use that. Uh, there's not like just like one 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 person that you visualize when you yeah, think of the company. Like, I can imagine Jeff Bezos listening. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I, I, I do. He's doing I, his bicep curls. Yeah, <laughs> on, his, on his yacht. Um, Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So I own it, and it does make it better. Like it genuinely lowers the barrier, but and it does make it bring it all together. But the fact that like you're putting a always on microphone piped to the internet into your house is an interesting mm. issue. And like I have read all of the stuff about like the way that Google Homes work, and like they have they have gone to great lengths to not actually send data when it's not hearing the magic words, which I will not say right now. Um, and and like that, that, I don't think they're piping the data to the server, but you, you have to instill a lot of trust. Yeah, it, it, it kind of sucks that like we're at the place where we have to trust the, because, because there seems something I, I feel like we went wrong somewhere mm. where there's a lot of in and out, di- like just even on my laptop, there's yeah. a lot of things floating home yeah. Um, that I feel like I should know better, yeah. like what, what phones home and that like, if there's so many things phoning home that it feels like it would be a real chore for me to manage, yeah. that seems more of a sign that maybe less things should be phoning home, but yeah, it'd be really and, great to be able to audit my network and yeah. just, you know, like I, t- I say, okay, Google, I can say it. I'm safe because yeah. like, you're not surrounded. <laughs> no, I'm not surrounded. Um, it lights up. Yeah. I, I don't ask it anything. And I see, yeah. well, did that go to the internet? If right. I have a conversation in front of it, you know, Does, what, exactly what's, going out, <laughs> yeah, what's going out over that pipe? I, that would yeah. be fun to have that level of control over my home network. Well, I think that's like the fundamental missing piece in all of this is like these technology companies like invented all of this stuff. And then like, they just absolutely drop the ball on like, showing you what's going on like google can argue that you can see the audio and like whatever but the fact that you can't even see inside your own network if you're the average person is pretty messed up and Mm -hmm. it's not like it's weird apple could have done this if they didn't give up on their hardware like they could have been the company that um you know they had the airport express for example like they could have just run something on that that told you all the talky devices like i don't know exactly what that would look like but it could have existed and it's weird that it doesn't still there's a few there's like this mit project that actually lets you see all of the devices phoning home in your house and like you can run it and like just see what's happening it's actually pretty cool like i whenever i bring something new home i like kind of do that to see if there's any weird shit going on so i can make fun of it <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay right? well that's good um, that's good to hear i should check yeah, that out i'm doing it for the content i'll send you a link you can put it in the notes and okay. it's it's it lets you kind of like understand at least like what services they're calling and that kind of thing. I also run like um, Pi Hole, highly recommend. It's like a mm. ad blocking server you can put on a Raspberry Pi um, and it blocks at the network level. So like you're, you can block ads in your TV, right? Like there's so many stories of smart TVs getting software updates and adding ads and like all sorts of nonsense later. You can get around that and you should. <laughs> that, the only saving, the only reason why all these like failing internet of things companies didn't pivot to ads is because they didn't have a, have a, a screen. Right. And like, but, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Can then, you imagine like <laughs> your, your, your cat has to watch an ad. <laughs> right. Before. Right. What well, reminds me of like, there was this patient a while ago. It was like, um, Spotify, or one of these companies, or maybe it was McDonald's. They wanted to invent a thing where like, you could skip ads by saying McDonald's while watching a McDonald's ad. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Which is just like uh, so dystopian. That's awful. Yeah, I it's love truly, it. truly uh, like the most dark timeline. But I don't know. It's, it's this weird line I walk because I, I 
I do think there's legitimate use in a lot of these products and they might make people's lives easier. The privacy problem is a different debate. Like, does Barbie need internet to do the thing? Like, the fact that it ended up, there was a story about, I think it was Barbie, could, like, hackers made it download, like, racist stuff and, like, it would say, like, PP the frog things and, like, weird stuff. Uh, and, like, I think what these companies aren't asking themselves in these meeting rooms is like, what could go wrong? Like, they're just like, we can, they're like, we're going to put internet in the toast of what should we do with it? And that's like mm. the conversation. Like, that's it. Yeah. It, that, that, I think that's been like kind of the big turnoff for me. Like nothing mm-hmm. has landed and it seemed so excellent and so well right. thought out that it would really improve my life. Like I was trying yeah. to think, do I have any smart devices in my home? Yeah, obviously I have a phone and a laptop. Mm-hmm. I've got Google Assistant turned off on my phone. Right. Um, but my sister has this um, tea kettle that mm-hmm. it's not a smart device, but it has an LCD and a little oh. knob on it. Oh. And you just dial the temperature that you want. See. And then it heats up. And it's a, one of the most beautiful devices in this entire yes. house. It doesn't, it doesn't have it's Linux. So but it feels smart to me in the sense yeah. that it's smarter than me putting water on a stove. Right, right. But that's that's the thing is like the next logical, these people, whoever they are who make the smart things, they would take the simplicity of that and then they'd somehow conclude that maybe you would like to ask Google to put the water to 90 degrees. Like I don't, I don't really know. A lot of the time I question whether or not it's legitimate or just flashy. And that's the big issue. Like going, I think in the next few years, as the business models shake out, the big issue will be how do you explain to people that adding the internet might not be beneficial? Mm. Like, because you, you go to Home Depot or something and you see like a washing machine that's done with buttons, a washing machine with internet and buttons, and it can be controlled while you're driving your car or like whatever. And like, it looks better. I'm like, oh. who am I to argue? I'm like, yeah, it's the same price. But little do you know is like Jeff Bezos is getting a copy of like every washing load you do. <laughs> like, but, and that's that's the problem with it. And so I think going forward, I've thought about like this a lot, but like, I, I, maybe there's a label for these things. I, I don't know what it is. It's like, how do you tell people this risks? It feels like the same uh, with, um, like if you see the health risk things on alcohol or something, it's like, Oh, like a it's surgeon, be surgeon yeah. general. Yeah. Like, internet what? of shit's warning. Yeah, internet sh- shit, internet of shit's warning labels. Oh, I love really? that. Yeah, yeah, so maybe, maybe I'll do that. Um, you, you've got you've got a line of stickers, right? Yeah, I did. I did make stickers. Um, much to people's disappointment, they didn't have anything smart on them this time around. Yeah. So what, what would what would the um, what would uh, the Internet of Shit Internet of Things device be? How how would that? Oh my god! It, it would have to be something that's just like truly banal, like just some some object that you use every day. But if the internet drops even for a second, you can't do anything with it. So like, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Like maybe it's a car. Like it just can't drive if there's no signal. And I man, I make this joke, but this is a thing that happened. I went, but the first, I just like casting around in my mind like what about a toilet flush nope there's a smart toilet well that's the thing everything has been done literally there was a tweet thread that i retweeted on the account a few months ago where somebody rented something that wasn't a zip car i'm sorry zip car it wasn't you but it was somebody like you Mm. um and they drove it to their headlands in san francisco where there's no cell phone coverage and then they were like two hours three hours away from the city and they couldn't unlock the car because it requires internet it's like come on okay wait I got it. All right, it's a it's a Internet of Things page turner. All right? Oh, incredible! There and you is. mount it on a book, and uh-huh. and it, it has servos in it. Uh-huh. So to get it off, you need to push the app button yep. to release. You Otherwise, you have to break it. Right? And you know what's uh, great? People yeah. buy it. <laughs> <laughs> and so then you yeah. put you push the page turn button on your phone, it turns the pages. Oh. And then when the servers go down, you can't. Yeah. You can't you progress can't. in your book. Yeah, and it's recording audio the whole time for some reason. Yeah, uh, putting it on Amazon.com, but it's, 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 it's reco- making semantic analysis of your facial reaction yeah. <laughs> to the romance so, yeah. novel you're reading. Um, you joke, but like Simone G- Gatch probably made this already. Like the queen of shitty robots, she probably mm, yeah. made it. <laughs> yeah, why don't we have more uh, robots? of things i don't know that's a good question well we had some do you remember that like smart robot that was around for a while i forgot its name right now uh, the and one then they shut down friends with your family yeah yeah it was like a friend and then like they were like one day like came into the room and it's like i'm sorry my owner is turning off the server and like 
<laughs> you bring it into your family and the server turning off means it's murdered. <laughs> it's just like the most beautiful, like final step for this like damn thing. Like it's, it's crazy. Uh, can, can you imagine like what, are there any wins available? Like, like, so mm. it, there's the obvious one in, in, um, not quite, not our lifetimes, but yeah. you know, <laughs> let's see, there's washing machines and there's yep. dishwashers, mm-hmm. right? Huge labor saving. I know this yeah. for a fact because I live in uh, New York and we don't have a dishwasher right. and I'm at home all the time. So I'm creating a lot more dishes Right. and I'm, 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 I'm at the, at the sink half the day it feels like clip you're in a washing it's a huge time saver it's a really a life improving device mm-hmm. is there anything like that that you see that exists right now or could exist i mean like or is it all novelty i think the ones that i can think about are the really banal ones and i think because they have externalized reasons that they're good so like i think smart thermostats are a good example of like before smart thermostats, you had to remember to turn off the heat before you left the house. Like it was mm. so wasteful. Um, I'm not sure you need the whole internet to do that. Like I think there's okay. a better way to do it. Like I don't know. I, f- I feel like you don't need a like persistent server connection to know if you're not home. Um, right. So I think that's one with legitimate use. Oh man, I'm really struggling. They could to, just like, call Jeff Bezos and ask him right. if you're home. Yeah, yeah, he knows. Him and Mark Zuckerberg between them, they'll figure it out. But that's the, that I think that's what legitimately worries me about all of these things is like even with Nest, Google owns that. And like if you start, if you even like imagine in a world in which they start abusing your trust, uh, what well, I mean, it's not that hard to imagine. But if you imagine um, them using that data, that's a big amount of data just for ads. Like they know when you're not home or not. They know when you're cold. They know when you're hot. Like that's actually pretty useful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's what worries me. Well, and then like something that has always sounded pretty practical to me, it doesn't work mm-hmm. for me in, in an apartment, uh, but ring doorbells. Yeah. Like you could see who's at the door. You could, you know, there's uh, genuinely smart, useful. Smart locks, if you would really, if you could really trust them, that seems yeah. pretty practical. You're out of town. You want to sure. let someone into your house or something. You don't want to hide a key under a rock. <laughs> um, but like the, in the, yeah, exactly. But that's, in like the ring example, that yeah. got real creepy real fast. Well, that's, where, uh, that's exactly where The yeah. security was poor, but also they're like partnering with police departments. Yeah, like actively like harmful. <laughs> the point. Yeah. And like the data that gets is kind of scary as well. Like it just how much like voyeuristic footage is called. Um, mm. and like it's shared as adorable sometimes you'll see these like oh kid caught on camera I'm like man that's pretty weird um, but I think again that's useful if you can somehow own it and there are companies playing in that space like there's one like another one that I can just think of is like Unify they make this networking hardware they yeah. should make a smart doorbell that just works locally and I think you just need more of that so yeah I'm really into LAN lately there's um yeah. I miss land a, games. <laughs> the, yeah, land games. Yeah, that low latency. Yeah. Um, the do you remember Rendezvous? Oh, I don't. What was that? Um, I think I forget if it was Rendezvous first and then Bonjour and then Airdrop right. or oh, what, yeah, what was. But like Apple could find yeah. um devices on your local network and you mm-hmm. could share files with them, but also they'd pop up as like a separate like iChat. Yeah. window so you right. can just chat with people on your local network and yeah. i always thought it would be hilarious uh uh like being at an office and then the internet would go down or slack would go down right uh, and we can't talk to each other digitally but like right we're on computers that are all networked physically yeah. like That's why bizarre. can't we com- why aren't we good at communicating um over the lane i feel like it's like the most capitalism reason ever always like it's like I see you could host yourself and now we have Slack. I, and I think like, maybe like if I could, if I would logic it away, it's because um, like it's user experience, right? To like let everybody buy into it. Like you need to make it simpler. And, and honestly, if you've ever tried to host an IRC server or like join one, mm-hmm. it's not easy. It's not um, difficult. And like, I think Apple could have been the company to do this, uh, but it's just, their attention has been really fragmented over the years. Like they had the airport extreme, like that could have been the thing for this. Like, 
they they have hunted, but it seems like they barely do anything with it. And I think I think you're right that like more land stuff would be cool. Like I, I genuinely think if you could buy an Apple Airport Extreme that was also the home hub and like you didn't have to rely on an iPad or an Apple TV, that would be interesting. Mm-hmm. But that's not what they're doing. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And, and more instead land. I like that. They just want a phone. They want a phone home, and yeah, it's just. It seems like it's so easy to route things through. That's I'm, the what. That's what's weird about it. It's like why is doing the thing that is physically harder, you know, yeah. routing over the entire internet to and and you know what what was that twenty servers to yeah. turn on a light bulb? Yeah, you know why is the physically harder thing um, the easier thing? Because that, that, it, it is easier as a company to do it that way. It is, but it's all in the updates and like being able to do that. But it's just that they choose to be so binary, and I think like gives them control. They, they could have, they could be a way forward out of this. I do think that we might come full circle. Like you do start to see companies like Sonos actually. They acquired a company called Clips, which mm-hmm. makes like a um, like an offline OS on chip um, voice software. So like maybe we go full circle, like then you can talk to Sonos without the internet. Like that would be cool. I love it. I mean, and and ideally, if that works really well, like you you're gonna get lower latency. Yeah. Like I, I can imagine it seems like the the true voice assistant, like either I'm gonna be talking to like a edge, like a 5G edge yeah. server in mm-hmm. my neighborhood, <laughs> or I'm gonna be Not talking. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh or I'm going to be talking to like the machine right here, but I'm not going to be mm-hmm. talking to someone across like a server across the country right. to have truly like good, uh, like um, conversations with a, a I, digital assistant. I think that's where it might fall apart. Like uh, my family lives in the middle of nowhere. And like, I gave them a Google home for Christmas, like the evil person I am. Mm-hmm. And I went to the house to see them, how they use it. And, like it was terrible. It's like Google, you're used to it just being instant. Right. But this thing, it would like, you talk to it and then you'd have to wait like 30 seconds. It was like the awkwardest conversation of all time because the internet was so bad. And mm. it's like, I do wonder if we'll come full circle to get everybody. The real edge. The real edge has real always edge. been in your palm and, yep. and on your lap <laughs> oh, and un- under your desk. That's yep. the real edge computing. The real edge computing, the land. It turns out everything is land. <laughs> the land um, of things. I'll start, I'll start a counter. Um, oh, I like that. Uh, Twitter account and just <laughs> shit posts about your shit Honestly, posts. Honestly, there's, there's some, there are some counter accounts. That's the weird thing. Like, there's an um, uh, internet of shitting, which is like somebody mm. made an account where, like, every time they use the toilet, they tweet at my account. <laughs> and, that's it. and there's another guy who connected his cat's litter box, which does the same thing. I had to block it because it was constantly <laughs> tweeting me. So there you go. There's a whole niche right there. Wonderful. Well, I got to eat dinner. Um, it has been not prepared by robots or internet connected devices. It's yet. been lovingly prepared by yet. It was lovingly prepared by a family member. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. Um, so happy to be able to talk to you. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. What's next for you? What's, uh, Oof, what, what, I, you got any big plans? I do feel a pressure to uh, make something bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I'd make a sticker that does something or like, a, I don't know, you can buy something that hacks you. I, like, I feel like that, but probably it'll be a t-shirt. <laughs> Like you just swipe your like it's an NFC tag. You swipe your phone on it, and it just like your phone starts broadcasting all its Wi-Fi passwords. Yeah, or like airdropping all your photos. Like yeah. <laughs> something like I don't know. I've got to find something like that because right. I feel people wanted a connected sticker. Anyway. How can people find your merch? You, you do have stickers right now, though. Yes, I'm going to put them back in stock soon. So you should watch that. Okay. Um, it's Internet of Shit I have the domain name incredibly nice. Um, and Internet of Shit on Twitter. That's it. Hit, hit hit him up <laughs> or she go. we don't yeah, know I, 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 you know sometimes yeah. it's multiple people some of them aren't me so there you go <laughs> oh who knew who just knew just gotta mix it up and, just to make um, it mysterious this is gonna I don't know how much sense it's gonna make that I'm saying this right now but um <laughs> We, uh, I'm using a voice changer on your voice. Uh, <laughs> I haven't figured out how to do that at the time of this recording. It seemed like you did. But when I publish it, you're going to sound amazing. Do you have um, any any tips or suggestions? I hope I sound like I'm in like those witness protection things on TV. That's all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know. That can be arranged. 
Well, Very thank you so it. much, Internet of Shit, and uh, well, I'll I'll see you on, in uh, on the Twitter and the um, and and snooping around your your open Linux servers. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs>